How are you doing gardeners? Ed Snyder with Fresh Picked Acres of Kansas. I'm happy to have so many new viewers that's uh, watching us and uh, special thanks, a special shout out to the folks from Lenexa. Thank you for welcoming uh, myself to your, to your uh, market. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I wanted to show you, for many of you, some of our corn some of our field out here and uh, we're doing a little farm tour i'm also for those of you interested in uh keeping raccoons out of your sweet corn i'm offering you know we're showing our raccoon fence and that type of thing uh, electric fence up for that and it does a pretty good job of keeping the raccoons out i got a couple of them i've uh, that's broken in since this film and everything but uh Join me out here. Uh, glad to have you along. And if you like these types of videos, hit that like button and subscribe and come grow with us. Well, we have a change in our environment for one day out of all the 90s and everything else we're going to experience close to 100s coming up. But if you notice how we do have some uh, puddles out here. Hide today and uh, well, let's see what the rain is right at nine tenths inch of rain we'll let that go for a little while because we're going to have more rain yet today i can't you know i want to thank god for this uh nice rain we have received it came out at last night it was supposed to be start raining around 11. i was just so darn exhausted after putting up that after working out in that heat yesterday and doing it getting the raccoon fence up and um uh, Today we're going to go ahead and pl uh, plant our pumpkins. We still have, nor we have always planted our pumpkins in the directly into the soil, but we can't do that because the crows eat our seeds. And when as soon as the plants come up, so for a year or two anyway, we got to get them out of that darn habit. So we'll we'll plant our pumpkins uh, in containers. Now for the record. Why am I planting pumpkins so late when there's so many v videos and pictures out there with guys with full-blown pumpkins out? Well, I like having a green stem on our pumpkins and uh, for a handle. The pumpkins here, we, we get hot enough that everything takes off so well. And uh, honestly, if I plant them early, what happens is the first of... The first of October, all of my stems are already dead. They're already dead. So yeah, there goes the crows right there. They're flying, flying out of the backfield out there. And that's the issue that we have is they'll they'll do that. So that but that's why that's why Dilly and I don't do our um, uh, pumpkins early. Well, that's why we don't plant them in early June. Prefer to plant them later June. We're going to be hot very hot in the summer so i think what we do is we'll go ahead to beat the crows we'll go ahead and we don't have to save us a lot of uh, replanting because that's what we had to do last year um <clears throat> from the crows digging out the seed once the plant emerges the plant comes up the seed uh well they, they find the plant they dig it out with their beak then they peck the center of the of the seed so that's why that's what we dealt with so uh, we have that to do. We also don't plant early because we end up with dry dead stems in the 1st of October when everyone else, um, you know, has their stuff. So we're going to do that. So these are different. That's the reason why we do what we do. Let's go ahead. We have some big storms coming, but I do want a little air coming in. So let's go ahead and just drop that down a little bit. Just give them a little bit of air on each side there. And... I need to count the number of my uh, watermelon rows and or pumpkin rows. I need to do that, and I'd like to see how much. Get that. I'd like to see how much of my. There we go. I'd like to also see if there's any uh, raccoon, uh, is uh, you know break-ins. Uh, that's always, that's always a, uh, an important part of my day is checking raccoon break-ins when i have the sweet corn fence up so basically we'll just go for a nice walk so we're out here at the sweet corn and um 
definitely got it's looking good it's looking very good uh, this rain is just perfect that nine tenths inch is is just what we need to kind of kind of take this old sweet corn home is what we got to do and uh definitely we'll go we'll kind of look at it as we go down the rows but no i i actually look you can lots of times see where your fence has been opened up so walking the edges of the field help to verify if you've had any break-ins and stuff like that we can also look down the rows here this this particular field is small so you can walk down the rows and see if you got corn pulled over because the cor coons will pull the corn over on its pull it down deer eat it from the tops deer eat the uh, from the tops you can also look in the in the uh soil and see if you see any tracks of raccoon and that type of thing we did have some tracks on the outside of this but the corn wasn't ready so yeah this field's still looking prime but i'm telling you what you can smell the corn pollen you can smell it it smells wonderful here so anyway uh good rain for the potatoes it's great rain for the potatoes we uh started actually seeing where our um onions are laying over the texas sweet we'll see how solid this ground is i can still kind of move out here the uh but we'll see here how they're laying down that's telling you there that the onions are done they're done they're they're done forming it's time to i want to go ahead and uh, get them pulled and get them on the drying rack and uh so that's that's done but i tell you we've had some beautiful onions beautiful absolutely our best year on onions okay so down at the very bottom they got flooded a lot i caught a few of them with a little bit of spray as i was trying to clean up the highway other than that it's still going to be our very best onion year so yeah look at how much i'm sinking in there so we'll get back out of here before i go all the way under i'm growing onions in plastic it's wonderful i i i have no regrets there my concern i had a big concern going on i mean i'll admit i had a big concern growing onions in plastic whether or not that was going to actually fly but those fears are gone now i mean i got some monster you can just see the bulbs you can see the bulbs that's that's a big onion down in there that's a big onion so we're gonna have a lot of that makes it a lot easier to sell I, and it's funny when you go to the farmer's markets uh, the red onions sell at any stage they're the best sellers uh, i can sell a red onion anywhere but when it comes down to the uh, other onions it's the big ones always grab first and then then the then the mediums and smalls. i actually take my uh i take these little onion bags i put three pounds together of your uh, medium medium small onions and i bag them up they're still a good good slice of onion just not very big so delia just had this row planted a couple weeks ago can you believe it i mean conditions are perfect for it and i'm telling you what that black plastic adding the heat has really turned on has really turned on look at these look at look at that look at that broccoli too look at that broccoli but having that heat actually push them i heard farmer dre once say that he planted a seed where his uh, strawberries were and in 30 days he already was harvesting zucchini so without a doubt this is look at them well we're going to be harvesting a lot of uh, yellow squash to, uh, by later on today amazing absolutely amazing so the other side is is we yeah we got to get in here and i got to run the tiller billy has done a really good job it just but you, hoeing takes a long time i'll get in here when it dries back out later on in the week and uh but before the corn appears and i need to get run the tiller down here to kind of control these weeds uh everything you can even see down at the bottom of the hill 
our uh, sweet potatoes down there. I think without a doubt next year we'll, have, we'll grow more sweet potatoes now that we seem to be able to do it. The green beans are still blooming, still getting bigger. Now this is that first plant and this is where we're, this is where we're currently harvesting. And I'm gonna have a very, very, very big green bean wheat. This is gonna be a huge, from this point on, we're gonna have a lot of green beans. What's kind of scary is these are my better beans. Look at that. Folks, it's my finest green beans I've ever I've ever raised. I, I mean, thank God. I mean, really, I, that's who the thanks needs to go to. But have you ever seen green beans look so well? I have it. In my life, I have it. I'm 62 years of age, and this is my very best green beans I've ever grown. Good genetics, good timing. This is warmer. It was it was uh, two weeks warmer than the first planting. That, that planting also had a lot of aphids on it for some reason. This area has not. So uh, really championship quality green beans in that little plot. Here I got to get in here and run a tiller on the third planting. But you see they're taking off. My goodness, look at all the weeds in that area. Whew. All right, well, we're moving on. I don't even want to think about the weeds, uh, the tilling all of that. Good gracious. But we will. We'll get it. And so I'm up here. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to count the number of pumpkin rows. It's basically 60 pumpkins plants per row. That's what we're going to do. And uh, now look at this. My gosh. Just gorgeous. Just absolutely gorgeous. Look how them old cantaloupe are just filling it in. We have had to fight the aphids really bad in here, but look at how they're filling in. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, this is wonderful. Really did a lot of weed pulling in these rows down there, and it looks like the weeds are back. So, no, oh, these are, I do got some flowers in here. Look at the sangria flowers. Yeah, if it would, slow down and everything maybe you get a bee to come in here and help me pollinate these the crimson sweet have been doing very well we have a lot of we have an absolute we have an awfully lot of uh, crimson sweet um watermelon in here um so anyway yeah no these guys have enjoyed their uh, fertilizer i've been giving them you can see that uh, just going with the Miller product on the fertilizer. Um, I've heard good things about how you can push your watermelon and how many ounces per week. So I do, I take that water fertilizer. I do the number of plants times 0.03. And that equals the amount of ounces per week I need to feed them. That's my, that's my recommendation. That's how I've done it. I do that with Master Blend tomato, but for my liquid fertilizer, I do the number of plants times 0.03 equals the amount of ounces of, of um, uh, a fertilizer I need to apply per week. So I don't deal with acreages or anything like that. I have such small bands. I don't, you know, the sweet corn over there is 1.1 acres. So that would be easy to figure that if I want to put 100 pounds of nitrogen to the acre, well, that's easier to figure. Where I'm looking at just a couple of tenths of an acre, it's harder for me to, to uh, actually decide. So I do know how many plants we got out here. So we're just taking the number of plants times um, 0.03, and then I apply the appropriate fertilizer for that. Maybe that'll help somebody out here. I hope it does. I hope it does. So... We're gonna keep on going. I'm gonna count up my, here's the last of our watermelon rows. And then we begin right here with pumpkin rows. All right, so I figured up we have nine, or we have 16 rows for pumpkins. So we'll go with about just shy of a thousand total pumpkin plants. I was out here admiring my neighbor's uh, soybeans 
and I'm happy he has the soybeans. It is going to take some pressure off of Dilly and I. We got a crow sitting on top of that hill up or on top of that limb up there. Them old boogers and um, they. I think I actually had a. I actually think I had a, a, a pair of hawks in here also because the crow pressure's been a lot less. So let's take a look here at the other sweet corn. Uh, like I said, this is our our fence set up. If you got leaves and whatever that's <clears throat> challenging your fence, just cut them. Just just cut them off. Let's go ahead and pop the leaf off. Pop the leaf off. We don't we don't need to have anything. You know, just don't need it. Just take it off and yep. There's one laying on it. Break it off. Yep. So all together, this I'll get in here. They the 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 forecast actually calls for uh sweet uh for uh torrential downpour so i really wanted to go ahead and put down my last application of nitrogen before this storm hits and there's just no way i'm too afraid uh, i was just too afraid if i get a dang flood of water coming down here a torrential as they say well what am i accomplishing i'm washing my money away i'm it's not a ecologically sound timing so let's just, I'm just waiting uh, for this to go by. And if I have to hook up my uh, water gun just to, just to irrigate this, that's fine. I can do that. They can, um, all, all of this can benefit from having some water put on. So anyway, just that's kind of where I'm, where I'm at when it comes down to the nitro, nitrogen cycle. So this, as we see, every, this, the second planting uh remember this is our washout planning uh the ones that were had i did have a torrential downpour so and then last but not least look at this look at matriarch look how beautiful this is looking now these will pollinate these are seven days behind my planting over there now there is some of those seeds in here so i'll have to be walking these rows as i go i, I do have especially that very first plant you can see the differences right here and uh, we did have a coon get in here that's that's not new new stuff this here's where a coon kind of came in and sampled but he didn't eat anything if you notice he just he pulled it down he probably tried to bite through it but there's nothing there anything good to eat so anyway so this first six rows this especially these first six are going to be the same age as over there i had this much left in my in my planter box but i don't see where anything has actually you know i don't see where my fence has been pushed over whatnot and again as a reminder i'm setting my electric fence wire this is my favorite way to uh this is my favorite uh raccoon fence setup right there i do like the fiberglass rod it pushes in the ground easy and I like using those uh, uh, insulators because you can slide them up and down on the pole so you can get it adjusted regardless of from one year to the next you can get it now on the fence corners I do make sure on the fence corners that I use a steel post something solid so pulling four to five posts whatever it doesn't take long to do it you guys can do that in a heartbeat so yeah just got to it's part of the game part of the gig so yeah we had a few pulled down here uh prior to this and reminded us we would better get our butts in gear and get it done there's some doves but um no everybody's looking pretty good this got this short cord on the edge where the deer were so nice to uh the and I don't think they got quite as much fertilizer and whatnot, so it happens. Uh, this is, though, extended farm ground, though. We, this is a new row for us. There's no real history to this spot. And now this one, this corn, yeah, look at that. Look at that. <clears throat> he, something got in here. It's probably before we got here. To make it easy on yourself, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and 
seeing how I got a few of them, go ahead and throw these across the fence over here and uh, get it. But yeah, there's a few more sampling over here. Got to make sure there's no raccoon inside of the Golden Gates. Yeah, that one, that one got knocked over maybe by a deer. Yeah. I'm gonna have me a lot of corn. That's good news, good news. It's wet in here, folks. Let me get out. Yeah, no real significant damage. Would you look at how nice the corn is planted right here. We replaced a backing plate and replaced the brushes on my uh, uh, on my uh, finger pickup last uh, winter, and I, I showed you guys a video on that. But look at look at how nice. I did not come in here and pull any doubles or anything like that. This was early planted corn, and it so it didn't come up as 100% as my third planting of corn. It just it was a little, you know, you got that cooler temps. But I am gonna make it by the 4th of July, I believe, I know I am, on that first batch of sweet corn over there and some of this. This might actually make 4th of July. It's a chance of that. I mean, we're the 17th of, the 17th of uh, June, and would you just look at it? I mean, this is, the, this is my little bit longer season corn, so yeah, I mean, it's, this is my this is my my number one matriarch is my number one seed that I get from uh, Rupp seeds, but it's it's my go-to and it's a triple sugar, is what it is. So um, yeah, it'll be the children's corn maze in October. I'll bring the tractor up this way, and uh, the the hay rack uh, hay rack ride will bring the tractor up along this edge and uh, draw people off and then they can uh, work their way over to the pumpkin patch. I think this will be a good drop off spot over here. Let them work their way through the maze and pop out at the pumpkin patch and then we can pick them back up on the way around. That's, I think that's my game plan. So anyway, yeah, this rain couldn't have came at a better time and we got more rain coming. I'm getting a little sprinkles right now on me. But nothing of any significance so there's our uh, leftover pumpkin from last year i just tossed it on that fence post the uh but no looking pretty smarty